welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History. If you don't know by now, I'm Claire Ridgeway. I research and write about Tudor history for a living and I've published uh, a fair few books on Tudor history as well. Now today I'm going to take you back to the summer of 1553, a very eventful time in Tudor history. Now, on this day in Tudor history, the 19th of July, 1553, 13 days after the death of her half-brother, the 15-year-old King Edward VI, 37-year-old Mary Tudor, and by Mary Tudor, because there are a couple of Mary Tudors, this one was the daughter of King Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon, she was proclaimed Queen of England, France and Ireland and all dominions. Now, Mary was at Framlingham Castle in East Anglia at the time, so she was actually unaware uh, of the proclamation, of this official proclamation of her queenship and the fact that her first cousin once removed, uh, Queen Jane or Lady Jane Grey, had been removed from the throne and that Mary was now officially queen. Now, I'd like to give you a couple of contemporary sources giving details of this official proclamation. First, we have the Chronicle of the Greyfriars of London, which records the 19th day of the same month, which was St. Margaret's Eve at four of the clock at afternoon, was proclaimed Lady Mary to be Queen of England at the Cross in Cheap, with the Earl of Shrewsbury, the Earl of Arundel, the Earl of Pembroke, with the Mayor of London and diverse other lords and many of the aldermen and the King's Sheriff Master Garand, with diverse heralds and trumpets. And from thence came to St Paul's All, and there the choir, sorry, choir sang Te Deum with the organs going, with the bells ringing, the most part all, and that same night had the most part of London Te Deum, with bonfires in every street in London, with good cheer at every bonfire, the bells ringing in every parish church, and for the most part all night, till the next day to noon. The second source, diarist uh, and merchant tailor and citizen of London, Henry Machin, corroborates uh, that, um, that account. Although he states that the proclamation actually happened between five and six o'clock rather than at four o'clock. And he gives a bit more sort of detail. He writes of there being four trumpeters and two heralds. And he says, as well as the Te Deums being sung, bonfires being lit and bells being rung, he adds that there were tables in every street with wine and beer and that there was money cast away. So I'm assuming that money was thrown to the people for them to collect. How wonderful. Uh, so... London, London is full of good cheer. I find it sort of interesting and, and it must have been very confusing for the people of London because, you know, just a few days earlier, they'd been having a proclamation uh, in Cheap and Fleet Street and around London that, you know, Queen Jane was the official queen and now it's Queen Mary is the official queen. And I think the English people uh, were expecting, really, Mary to be the next queen. And so there was a lot of joy. Uh, yeah, and I can imagine them enjoying uh, these bonfires and the bells ringing and obviously the free wine and beer and the money being uh, cast around. Uh, that definitely would have, uh, would have um, made them enthusiastic about Queen Mary's accession. I want to just share with you another on this day event. I'm not going to go into details, but I just want to mention it today. But it was on this day in 1545 that King Henry VIII's uh, flagship, the Mary Rose, uh, sank right in front of the king, so right in front of his eyes in the Battle of the Solent between the English and French fleets. Now, it's not known for sure. We don't know 100% why the Mary Rose sank. There were some very compelling uh, arguments and theories. All we know for certain is that the English fleet moved out to attack the French fleet in the late afternoon of the 19th as a fitful wit sprang up and that something went wrong as the ship carried out a turning manoeuvre. 
Uh, the Mary Rose uh, sank along with the majority of her crew, including uh, Sir George Carew, the captain. Uh, so an awful, awful thing to have happened. But um, the good news is that, you know, the Mary Rose uh, was located and it was brought up and we now have the wonderful Mary Rose Trust and the Mary Rose Museum where you can see the Mary Rose and you can see artefacts uh, that were found um, on her. Uh, you know, wonderfully preserved Tudor artefacts. It is a fabulous place to visit. You'll find it in Portsmouth on the southern coast of England. A great day out. Anyway, thank you for joining me today. You can subscribe by clicking around about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as new videos go live. And you can, of course, give this video a like. I do hope you're enjoying this series. You can, obviously, if you're new to this, you can binge watch from uh, the 1st of January and just uh, catch up with some events that, uh, you know, the titles take your fancy and learn about these Tudor events and these fascinating Tudor people. Thank you for joining me. See you soon. Bye-bye.